Rapasha, it's so interesting to me to see the action in a stock like Costco, which so often seems to hold up better in times of a sell-off or, frankly, in times of inflation. Yes, food prices may be going up, but if they're going up everywhere, is Costco still not a good bet as a consumer and if you're picking stocks in the retail sector? Yes, yeah, so I think Costco still is a good bet. I think today the stock is really down due to inter higher interest rates. So Costco is a high multiple stock, trading at more than 35 times earnings. So it's all multiple related. The business actually benefits from higher levels of food inflation. So in the latest quarter, we think Costco saw about a seven percentage point benefit to the top line just related to inflation in the business. And Costco does tend to have a bit of a higher income consumer in some cases. Obviously, you have to member, have a membership to go there. But obviously, you're probably a little price conscious at the same time. If you have a membership to Costco, if you like buying in bulk and being sort of a wholesale member. So is this uh, is, is it a beneficiary for consumers in that regard, too, if consumers that go there are, are perhaps not those that are struggling the most in the face of high inflation? Yeah, so I think I think in this case, you know, Costco offers significant value to consumers. So I think in this type of environment, more of those middle consumers uh, will continue, you know, will go to Costco even more frequently to get the value. So, the, you know, at the gas pump, you save money every day. And then, you know, on typical grocery items, you could say 20 percent plus versus your grocery store. So I, I think Costco, this this environment plays the Costco strengths. And I think they're going to continue seeing traffic and share gains in, in coming months, similar to what we've seen really the past uh, two to three years. Give me a thought on Dollar General, which I think is another one of your choices, and also where Walmart fits. Yeah, so Dollar General is a top pick for us. And in this type of environment with consumers facing significant inflation, you could see trade into the into the Dollar General and the Dollar Store Channel as consumers seek value. And that's already playing out. Uh, Dollar General called us out in their Q1 report. Even in their Q2 report, they again called out there's, that they're seeing even more trade in. And what's unique is that they're seeing a customer making as much as $100,000 now shopping at Dollar Journal, which is a new takeaway versus what they've seen historically. So I think DG is extremely well positioned for this environment as consumers find this sort of and more, more consumers seek value. And then Walmart, it's really a mixed back. So on the food inflation side, uh, Walmart is also, also going to benefit. Uh, middle and higher consumers are shopping there more as they're seeking value. But the negative is that lower income consumer and even some of the middle income consumers uh, you know, they have less discretionary dollars. So I think you're seeing a shift from higher margin discretionary products like TVs, electronics, uh, clothes, you know, apparel into food. So um, so it's really a mixed bag for Walmart. And I think to your point about that $100,000 household income at Dollar General, Walmart was seeing that in the last quarter. If I'm remembering off the top of my head, I think it was three quarters of the growth in food was from households that have incomes of more than $100,000 there. But I want to look a little bit big picture and a little longer down the road. As we're talking about inflation, we know that it's higher for a number of reasons. Not all, most people believe, can be controlled by the Fed. We know we had supply chain issues. If we are going to see a widespread strike in the nation's railroads, in the way that freight is delivered, which I believe about half of what's delivered on the railways is consumer-facing retail goods. What does that mean for the holiday season for either the supply of goods and or the prices that consumers will be paying? Yeah, so it, it again makes the supply chain even more complicated. Uh, retailers have you know, dealt with so many roadblocks over the past few quarters. It's hard to say exactly how this you know, ends up playing out. But to, to the extent that you can have shortages, um, you know, it can lead to more inflation. Uh, but I, I, but I think it's still, it's still too early to reach a conclusion on how that how that how those strikes will end up hitting uh, grocers and other retailers out there. Raprash Parikh of Oppenheimer, thanks for joining us. We'd like to have you back as we see these things play forward. Thank you, Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.